All right, I received this package several months ago, and I vaguely remember what it was. It was a Commodore 64 book from Bitmap Books. So let's take a look at it. So this is the package from Bitmap Books. This is how the product is packaged and shipped from the United Kingdom. And let's take a look. Almost hate, almost hate to destroy it with a nice little artwork on the box. Oh, this shipped. Look at that. Love when they do that because oftentimes I've received books where the corners are just destroyed. Not destroyed, but you know. When you buy a brand new book and you pay upwards of 60 bucks or $100, you don't want them to be damaged in the door right out of the box. So. And so here it is, the Commodore 64, a visual compendium. And not only was it beautifully packaged and it has these corner protection pieces, but it's also shrink wrapped. And uh, I don't know, I don't remember the last time I received a shrink wrapped book. This is very cool. So let's dig into this book. I'm gonna take the shrink wrap off. Now I ordered this book many months ago. I just haven't had a chance to finally, this is, today is the first chance I've had, really had to take a look at it. And I have to say it's really, really nice so far. Let's take it out of the book sleeve. Kind of wonder why they do that sometimes. Is, let's take a look and see what the differences are. So I think it's strictly just further protection for your book because I don't see any difference in the artwork there. And on the back side, it's not comp not obvious that if there's any changes. But even by itself, just it's really nice. Let's take a look and open it up. This looks like the scan lines on this Commodore 64, the raster line interrupt the raster lines. Released in January 1982, the Commodore 64 is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the highest selling home computer of all time and has sold millions upon millions of units the world over. So then on the front cover, I'm going to zoom this in. We are taken to all of the contributors to the book. You have the nice temp table of contents, the foreword by Stu Cambridge. Okay. It's time to create computers for the masses, not the classes, by Jack Tremell. That's a nice quote by Jack. Ooh, Neptune lander, Jupiter lander, excuse me. So what strikes me as very cool about this book is, is the artwork. It's the screenshots from the video games, which is artwork in itself. We're taking a look at the, the games that it's covering here. Attack of the Mutant Camels. I'm just going to kind of look through the book. I loved Archon, The Dark and the Light. The Light and the Dark. Forbidden Forest is a fun uh, side-scrolling game. And here's some Jeff Mentor games here from Lamasoft, Grid Runner. And admittedly, I haven't played all of these. International Soccer. Pogo Joe. So what I'm seeing here is this book. Let me take a let me take a, a look here. Oh. This is a really cool book. It's a visual compendium. And 
it works for me. I love the artwork and the graphics. Um, the memories actually some of these games just bring back. Minor 2049er. Some of these games are hard too when you when you play them. <sighs> You have, to, you have to be really good at them to get for, far into the game. And then let me see, I'm assuming that further on into this, that there's probably some articles. Look at that. <laughs> Impossible mission. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Starquake. They even have a section on Zap Z uh, Z sixty four Z Zap sixty four Bard's Tale. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, I have a nice spread on on that magazine, Commodore magazine, Ball Blazer. Summer Games 2, that was a really well done game. Maniac Mansion, Petsky Gallery. Little Computer People. Here's an article, I'm assuming, or it's a quote by Gary Winnick. Getting to work on the C64 felt like a step, in, a step up from our prior constraints, and certainly I remember feeling like the scrolling backgrounds were unique and state-of-the-art. That's funny, nowadays it's so antiquated. In terms of how well it can do scrolling and everything. It was very difficult to achieve. Okay, and here we here we do have an article with Paul Doc Dockerty. Just love how beautiful the the imagery is, and this for me is going to be a page turner. I'm going to go through this whole thing, and and then I'm going to discover some games that I've never even played before. And here it's talking about Lemmings. And look, this says it was released in '94. That was well after the heyday, and I've never played. Uh, the Lemmings for the Commodore 64. Prince of Persia, and you can just see, uh, I appreciate how this is zoomed out and you can get a, an idea of more of the map, whereas when you're playing the game you're stuck right here. So I really like this, what they did here. Oh, and of course Prince of Persia is was a was done by Andreas Varga and released in 2011, so it wasn't um, it wasn't released with the at the same time as the other Prince of Persia's, and then I guess we're in the homebrew section here. C sixty four and Anibalt, which is a game I reviewed, I believe, on the channel. Super Bread Box, very fun game. Bomberland, another fun uh, party game you can play with four players. So these are all really cool. So twenty fourteen, we're coming all the way up. Commando, I didn't, I've, I don't have this one. I don't, I don't think I've played this one. It says it's released in 2014, something that I'm gonna need to check out. Soulless, Donkey Kong Jr., Karen and the, Tan and the Tangled Tentacles.
the Bear Essentials, uh, 2016 release. We're getting up to current current day. Planet Golf 2017 by Antonio Savona. Just one of my favorite games, if not my absolute favorite Commodore 64 game, because it's it's so fun. It it, it has so much uh, um, entertaining uh, graphics, artwork, humor. Uh, it has digital voice sampling and it's very challenging to get through and you have a lot of different worlds to play through so it's a very good game. Sam's Journey is another amazing game came out also on the 2017 by Knights of Bites. Argus 2018 I haven't played this one it looks pretty cool Hunter's Moon Remastered 2018 release, Shoot 'em Up, Thalamus Digital, Keystone Capers. Now this was uh, Antonio Savona and his team of developers, Stephen Day, uh, Saul Cross. They they were going through for a while. They're redoing a bunch of Activision games, and Keystone Capers was one of them. Uh, Activision Atari 2600 games. Unreleased games, despite playing host to thousands of games throughout its mighty reign, the C64 also had its share of titles that would unfortunately never see the light of day. Whether technically ambitious or simply dropped for financial reasons, these games would ultimately be confined to the scrap heap of history, destined never to see a commercial release. Well, that sucks. Uh, what a terrible thing to say. And so then we're, we're listing those games here. Daffy Duck and the Green Paint Caper, Fuzzball, Deadlock, Solar Jetman, Devious Designs. Yeah, there's a lot here. Thanks to everyone who made this book happen. And you can purchase your copy of the book over at bitmapbooks.co.uk. And here we go. We end with a color... Anyway, this is the kind of a walk through the visual compendium of the Commodore 64 book by Bitmap Books. It has this uh, sleeve here. And it's a very, very well done book. And uh, there's a lot of entertaining co content in this book and it's gonna keep me entertained for many hours. Oh, and then also I didn't notice it has this little divider so you can bookmark your spot. It has two of them, blue and red. Hope that color comes through in the camera. Right in there with the gunship. Anyway, this is definitely my kind of book and I am going to be kind of devouring this in the next couple of days.